Microelectromechanical Systems or MEMS is a technology that in its most general form can be defined as miniaturized mechanical and electromechanical elements such as devices and structures that are made using the techniques of microfabrication. The critical physical dimensions of MEMS devices can vary from below 1 micron on the lower end of the dimensional spectrum and all the way to several millimeters. Likewise, the types of MEMS devices can vary from relatively simple structures having no moving elements to extremely complex electromechanical systems with multiple moving elements under the control of integrated microelectronics. One main criterion of MEMS is that there are at least some elements having some sort of mechanical functionality whether or not these elements can move. MEMS technology has seen a rapid rate of evolution because of its great potential for advancing new products in a broad range of applications. The RF and microwave devices and components fabricated by this technology offer unsurpassed performance such as near zero power consumption, high linearity, and cost effectiveness by batch fabrication in respect to their conventional counterparts. The complexity of MEMS can be seen by the extensive range of different markets and applications. For instance, MEMS can be found in systems ranging across automotive, medical, electronic, communication, semiconductor, defense, aerospace, and more. Who invented the first MEMS device? Harvey C. Nathanson is the first inventor of MEMS device, a true nerd for microelectronic radios in 1965 while working as an engineer at Westinghouse Research Labs. Airbag sensors were one of the first commercial devices using MEMS. They are in widespread use today in the form of a single chip containing a smart sensor or accelerometer, which measures the rapid deceleration of a vehicle on hitting an object. The deceleration is sensed by a change in voltage. An electronic control unit subsequently sends a signal to trigger an explosive fill the airbag. The purpose of an airbag is to reduce injury and either cautioning the occupant's contact with the interior of the vehicle or preventing contact completely. An airbag is a large nylon bag which inflates and deflates very rapidly in the event of a severe crash. The driver's airbag is housed in the center pad of the steering wheel and the passenger's airbag were fitted in the upper left of the dash. Other airbags could also be found in the lower dash, seats, seat belts, roof, pillars, and roof structures. Some motorcycles also have frontal airbags. The airbag's deployment is controlled by sensors that detect the occurrence and severity of a crash. When the airbag controller determines that the airbag should be deployed, the system triggers an inflator unit that burns chemicals very rapidly to produce large volumes of inert gas to inflate the bag. As the bag inflates, it splits open the covers on the wheel, dash, pillar, seat, etc. as it emerges. In the case of a front airbag, as the occupant's head and upper body moves forward and strikes the inflated bag, the bag starts deflating through vent holes in its base to cushion, decelerating heads forward. 
The whole process of inflating and deflating occurs within 100 milliseconds, about the same time as the blink of an eye. The process is so fast, the occupant is often unaware that the aircraft is deployed. Side and curtain earbuds are sometimes slightly slower to deflate as the types of crush they are designed to protect against are different to frontal impacts. In the process of deploying, considerable smoke, dust, and noise is produced and this is over. For the driver or passenger earbuds to deploy in a crash, all the following minimum criteria must be met. The vehicle must be traveling at more than about 25 km per hour. The angle of impact is within around 30 degrees either side of the car's center line or around 60 degrees in total. The deceleration forces produced are at least equal to those produced when the car collides head-on with an immovable barrier at approximately 25 km per hour. Front airbags will not be deployed in the event of a side or rear end collision or in a rollover as they would provide no additional protection. There are other types of airbags. Dual stage airbags are a smaller generation of airbags that optimize the level of airbag deployment to suit the severity of the crash. Knee bags are fitted to some parts to protect lower limbs from injuries caused by impact with a dash panels. Some manufacturers provide seatbelts airbags to produce seatbelt induced injuries. Another example of an extremely successful MEMS application is the miniature disposable pressure sensor used to monitor blood pressure in hospitals. These sensors connect to a patient intravenous line and monitor the blood pressure through the IV solution. For a fraction of their cost, $10, they replace the early external blood pressure sensors that cost over $600 and had to be sterilized and recalibrated for reuse. These expensive devices measure blood pressures with a saline-filled tube and diaphragm arrangement that has to be connected to an artery with an needle. Pressure is an expression of force exerted on a surface per unit area. We commonly measure the pressure of liquids, air, and other gases amongst the other things. The standard unit for pressure is the Pascal. This is the equivalent to 1 Newton per meter squared. A pressure sensor simply monitors this pressure and can display it in one of the several units known around the world. This is commonly the Pascal, Bar, and PSI or pounds per square inch in the United States. In a nutshell, pressure sensor converts the pressure to a small electrical signal that is transmitted and displayed. These are also commonly called pressure transmitters because of this. Two common signals that are used is a 4 to 20 mA signal and a 0 to 5 volt signal. Most pressure sensors work using the piezoelectric effect. This is when a material creates an electric charge in response to stress. This stress is usually pressure but can be twisting, bending, or vibrations. The pressure sensor detects the pressure and can determine the amount of pressure by measuring the electric charge. Pressure sensors need to be calibrated so it knows what voltage or milliamp signals corresponds to what pressure. This is a basic zero and span calibration or minimum and maximum, which is a common job for maintenance personnel. One of the most successful MEMS applications is the inkjet printer head, superseding even automotive and medical pressure sensors. Inkjet printers use a series of nozzles 
to spray drops of ink directly onto a printing medium. Depending on the type of inkjet printer, the droplets of ink are formed in different ways, thermally or piezoelectric. In a thermal inkjet printer, tiny resistors create heat and this heat vaporizes ink to create a bubble. As the bubble expands, some of the ink is pushed out of the nozzle onto the paper. When the bubble pops or collapses, a vacuum is created. This pulls more ink into the print head from the part. One example of a new bio MEMS device is the micro tire plane, on which a number of cavities can be simultaneously filled accurately and repeatedly by capillary force. This is a relatively simple MEMS product in the form of a piece of plastic with high aspect ratio, micro machine, micro channels, and is classified as a lab on a chip product. Its dimensions are only 20 mm by 37 mm by 3 mm and enables automatic filling of 96 microwells by the use of capillary. RFMEMS is one of the fastest growing areas in commercial MEMS technology. RFMEMS are designed specifically for electronics in mobile phones and other wireless communication applications such as radar, global positioning satellite systems or GPS, and steerable antennae. MEMS has enabled the performance reliability and function of these devices to be increased while driving down their size and cost Key markets that SAT has addressed so far are the handset market and the laptop and tablet market. Gradually, these devices are getting thinner and smaller, and it's becoming more and more difficult to find a space for antennas. A conventional laptop needs to support Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but for the future laptop, they need to offer much wider and better wireless connectivity. They need to also support LTE and wide gates. We can achieve high isolation, so that's why we can bring all the antennas together in a small space and still offer multi-port, multi-band, simultaneous operation. And also, we can offer SATPNT tuning algorithm to achieve less sound and less effect by the environment. As the smartphone technology moves forward, there's a requirement for a number of things. First, the device can cover vastly more spectrum than it did before. But the other thing that is required is that one can operate antennas at different frequencies or the same frequencies simultaneously. We have a big technology. Offer active antenna solution for much smaller form factor with optimal performance. We can support multi port, multi band simultaneous operation with high isolation. And the most important, we can also offer patent tuning hours to offer less sound and less effect by the environment and end user. And offer more functionality to support multi carrier application and offer much wider channel capacity. Yes, if we move to the IoT market, SAT's technology is particularly applicable to the gateway area. Although it can be applied to the IoT devices themselves, the biggest market is definitely in the gateway. The gateway is very sophisticated. It needs to transmit and receive on very wide bandwidth. And it also needs to operate with a number of technologies like 2G, 3G, Wi-Fi, Ygig, and this is the area that is a speciality for SAT. For Internet of Things, it's a very huge market and now it become a very hit topic. They might not have the same requirement as smartphone or laptop or tablet, but they have different challenges because they have to move to much lower frequency bands and also for the device itself, it has different size of ground. It might be very small, 
it might be very big. We have a universal antenna solution, it's a single device but support multi-port, multi-bands and we also offer flexibility to change steel or passive component. It can adapt to different frequency band and also different ground plane. The small cell market is very appropriate for SAT technology. Devices that are used in the small cell market are mounted inside offices and in domestic home environment. They need to be beautiful, they need to look good in the office or at home. This means that it is very helpful to have an internal antenna and probably a relatively small internal antenna. This plays to the strength of SAT. The SAT antennas are capable of giving very broadband performance and they can provide a number of antennas operating at different frequencies simultaneously. For small cell market, the charging is slightly different. They require to support multi-users. And in order to do that, they have using more than four antenna to support the same frequency bands. For example, 4 LTE, they also need to support 2x2 Wi-Fi. In order to achieve that with a small space, isolation is one of the key. But with SAT patent technology, we have patented antenna arrangement to achieve high isolation between antenna ports. For example, we can achieve more than 15 dB isolation for LTE, more than 20 dB isolation for Wi-Fi, and more than 30 dB isolation between LTE and Wi-Fi. Also, the patented antenna arrangement for those LTE antennas. It's all very well producing a very sophisticated antenna. If you've got, you're making tens of millions or hundreds of millions of devices, cost becomes a very important area. Everybody wants their smartphone or their laptop to be as cheap as possible and to perform as well as possible. And that's one thing, because of the simple mechanical structure, we can effectively make a very low cost of high performance antenna. The most significant MOEMS device products include waveguides, optical switches, cross connects, multiplexers, filters, modulators, detectors, attenuators, and equalizers. Their small size, low cost, low power consumption, mechanical durability, high accuracy, high switching density, and low cost batch processing of this MEMS based device make them a perfect solution to the problem of the control and switching of optical signals. Wireless communication systems like their word counterparts have some fundamental challenges according to Van Der Veen, 1997. Limited allocation spectrum which results some limitation and capacity. Because of uncertainty in radio formulation, environment and the mobility of user signal feeding and spreading in time, space, and frequency increases. Power limitation which is the main constraint in any mobile and handheld device and systems. Moreover, interference due to frequency reuse in cellular wireless communication systems is another challenge. Many efforts have been done to investigate potential technologies in order to alleviate such as the desired effects. Some of these potential methods that researchers find are multiple access schemes, channel coding, and equalization in smart. In the figure shown, the main problem with wireless communication systems that smart antennas are used to alleviate that effect. The main idea which smart antennas are working on is sometimes referred to as human listening system by an